great. Excellent. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm going to give everybody just a moment or two to get in the room with us. Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Kelly Finelli. It, it, it really is Kelly Finelli, I know. Um, I'm the membership director here at the Chamber, and I'm so happy to see all of you guys this morning. If you'll go ahead and turn your cameras on, that'd be great. Then we can see your faces and associate your faces with your name and your company. Um, good morning, everyone. So we have a packed agenda this morning. We're going to go ahead and jump right in. I have just a couple of housekeeping items. We're going to go ahead and keep your... Um, your microphone's off, uh, just so if you have things going on in your office, it won't disturb uh, the other attendees or our speakers. This is being recorded, so if you want to go back and listen to it later, again, you certainly can, or if you want to send it on to some other contacts or refer them to that, that'd be great. They'll have an opportunity to hear the comments of all of our speakers as well. Um, we do have a quick, our uh, very full agenda. And those of you who've been on these calls before know that I really don't do speaker bios in the meetings because we have such a short time together. All of these people are very accomplished and you can go to their websites and see information on them. They're, um, they're more about their roles in the organizations and their personal accomplishments. But we're just going to go ahead and jump right in. Remember, we will do self-introductions at the end. Um, that way, if we run a little bit late, we we will be sure to give our speakers enough time. Um, we will send you the contact information tomorrow of everyone who was on the call, so you will know everyone who was in attendance and have their information. Um, we're going to run a couple of quick polls as well, which we often do here. And I'm going to tell you in advance what the questions are, because I always appreciate that. Then I can be thinking about them. Um, the first one, since we're talking about employment, we're curious, where do you promote your job opportunities? Um, is it in personal contacts? Is it uh, through the internet? Is it agencies and headhunters? Or is there some other more resourceful and creative way? So the poll will give you those choices. And for the other, we're just going to ask you to put that in the chat. And then we're going to run another Another quick poll kind of more towards the end about how you'd like to meet going forward. Do you want to meet in person? Are you interested in staying virtually? Do you would you like a social event? Or the last choice is don't meet, I'm too busy. So um, so just a heads up, we'll be doing a couple quick polls and you can think about what your answers want to be for that. And then we sent you a couple questions as well to think about in preparation for this meeting. Number one is what attracted what attracted you into the hospitality hospitality and tourism industry? And what would it keep what would it take to keep you there um, and then the other one is I'm looking for some success stories of your company and your employees I always use Roger Amadon we were talking about this yesterday those of you who know Roger he actually started as a valet parking cars and now Roger is the GM for the Palm Beach uh, Marriott Singer Island Beach uh, uh, Resort and Spa one of the most beautiful properties in all of South Florida. So an amazing success story. And I'd love to hear some success stories from you, um, your company and employees. So that's our agenda. I'm going to go ahead and jump in. We have Sergio, uh, Sergio uh, from Discover the Palm Beaches. I know you guys all know Sergio, so he really doesn't need an introduction. Michael Corbett is going to talk to us from Career Source and let us know what they're working on there. Um, we have Barbara Cipriano, who is with Palm Beach State College, and she is the Dean of Workforce and Corporate Education. So she's going to talk to us about the amazing things that they are doing there. And Stephen. Uh, Stephen Kozak from South Tech Schools is also going to talk to us. So um, we have a lot of really amazing information for you. Sergio, I'm going to let you kind of uh, tell us a little bit about why it is that we're having this discussion. <laughs> hey, and I'm so sorry to interrupt, but Kelly, Peter Ritchie is on the call with us. Oh, wonderful. And able okay. To speak, so. Excellent. Peter Ritchie is going to join us as well from Florida Atlantic University. Peter, thank you so much for joining us. Um, Sergio, how, how, are, how are things looking from your desk and window? <laughs> well, I don't have a good morning, everyone, but I don't have a snazzy background, but except my daughter's artwork, that would, that's about as snazzy as it gets around Very here. Very snazzy. So. You get extra points from me for that. So. All right. Um, but the good thing is, look, I uh, refaced the airport and there's quite a bit of more air traffic coming in. Uh, this time last year, um, it was like silence. Um, and that was kind of deafening and worrisome all at the same time, whether the next day I know we would be packing up our offices and closing our doors. Um, that's how scary it got. Um, 
And I think that um, this is a good reminder um, in this, this meeting uh, um, and in this task force is a good reminder that we are America's first resort destination. You know, hospitality is a way of life for us here. Um, and it has been for 100 plus years, as we like to say. Um, and I think today's event, it kind of tells that story, you know, like Kelly uh, alluded to with, with Roger Amadon's story that that tourism and hospitality remains, you know, the first step into the American dream. We've taken a lot of hits in the last year. Uh, we've been a battered industry, to say the least. Um, but it's it's one that we can return with, with confidence. And I like to always say during the last year that um, I went through 9-11. I went through the Great Recession when everybody said, oh, travel is going to change. No one's going to want to do this. No one's going to want to do that. We can't meet anymore. Hotels are going to close. Businesses will close, blah, blah, blah. Uh, the exact same stories we're hearing right now. Um, but business returned and people traveled again. Um, a good deal is hard to turn down. You know, you, you drop your inhibitions and go. Um, and that creates jobs for us here locally. Um, and, and like I always like to say also, we're the second largest industry in this county. Um, and then that's direct jobs, if people working at hotels um, or attractions or museums um, or restaurants, but also just indirect people, um, whether it's a law firm that a hotel has or whether it's an accounting firm that an attraction has um, or if it's a seasonal help here and there or the guys you know, mowing the lawn, whatever it might be. Um, it's a vast industry that, that never seems to stop growing. Um, and I think some of the speakers you're going to hear today um, can talk about those job opportunities and that first step into the American dream. Um, so I'll, I'll start, I'll stop there because I'm not going to be as entertaining as some of the other speakers. Um, but I just want to kind of lay the groundwork and, and say thank you for being as part of this task force. And thank you for being part of this industry. And, and the last note I'll tell you is that in case you haven't seen the news, you know, last in March, in some parts now in April, we're running 80, 90 percent occupancy in the hotels. Um, and it, it almost it almost brings a tear to my eye, but I won't cry on camera here. But uh, but it's, it's OK. It's I been, probably will. So, <laughs> yeah, it's been a long time coming um, and for the hoteliers out there on the call. Thank you. Um, yes. and for the attraction and restaurant people. Thank you for holding on um, more things to come. Um, so on to the next speaker. Great. Thank you, Sergio. Um, I so admire the work that you and your organization does. So it's a, just a pleasure to have you here and, and to be able to share good news with everyone. Um, Michael, we're teed, we've teed you up perfectly. Um, so all this great uh, progress is so exciting, but we have to fuel it with human power. That's, you know, that's the issue that we're here to discuss today. How do we keep that momentum going and how do we support it in the future and, and rise to challenges? This is such an opportunity here. Michael, take it away. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Kelly and Kirby. You're the one that has put in all the legwork behind the scenes for a year now and kept the group together. So I applaud you very much. And I'm happy to be a part of the varsity team today <laughs> to talk about hospitality and tourism. And the next slide, obviously, there's our beautiful downtown from the waterfront that we love to promote to people. And it's very appealing. Many, many people enjoy coming to Palm Beach County and specifically West Palm Beach. It sells itself for the most part. Next slide, please. I thought I would give you a view of the world from the International Space Station on the largest mega regions in the world. And if you look over to the left, you'll see us down in South Florida. We are ranked the 23rd largest mega region by GDP in the entire world. When I moved here 41 years ago, that was not the case, but you can tell that our state and specifically our region in Southeast Florida, we have really climbed the ladder, diversifying our industry. It used to be totally tourism and retirees and construction, and that simply is not the case today. So we are participating and competing on a global scale with all these other large regions around the entire world. Next slide, please. And if we shift to the North American continent, you can see in the United States, 
there's 11 large mega regions and we actually fall in sixth place right now. So when we're competing for companies to move here, to relocate here, a lot of times these are the other regions we're competing with. But again, the state of Florida is doing very well. We opened up, we're still open. We're a great business destination and environment and a great place for tourism and hospitality. Next slide, please. Last year in February, I pulled this map down to show how employment was doing across the country. And you can see the blue bubbles were predominant and the orange pockets in certain areas, that's pretty much what unemployment was in a lot of rural areas. And if you go to the next slide, you'll see what happened in March and no industry was impacted or rocked quite as badly as the hospitality industry. Look at the state of Florida, look at California, look at your major metropolitan areas. It was just devastated. And as Sergio said, it was tough. Our office is right here on the airport as well. There were planes parked for months that did not move. And it was just demoralizing to watch that day after day driving into the parking lot. But the silver lining in the cloud, if you go to the next slide, is that things have obviously bounced back. And it's great to see our unemployment rate at this point in time last year was over 14%. And it has dropped to four and a half percent as of last month. We have a new report coming out this Friday. So we'll see where that lies. But across the United States and the state of Florida, you can see that we're doing very, very well. We lost a lot of jobs as I showed you, but we've gained about 80% of those jobs back. And you can see there's almost 600,000 open jobs in the state of Florida. Our county leads the state in the wages, in the earnings, and that's very encouraging. Palm Beach County's positioned very well. If you go to the next slide, please. I thought I would show this CEO slide here, which we receive on a daily basis. We had a lot of challenges with people trying to file unemployment and reemployment. And I circled what were the predominant numbers here. The total claims received, six and a half billion, million, I'm sorry. And you can see that the number of claims processed over 5.2 million and claims paid 2.3 million. And that bottom figure, look how much money between the state and the federal government has been paid out to claimants in the state of Florida, over $25 wow. billion. So that's a big number. And I think part of the reason the economy has stayed pretty steady and is increasing, if you ask Peter Pignataro from our group, he, he will track this on a daily basis and we are doing very well. I'm glad that things are looking up for us. The next slide, please. Our top industries in Palm Beach County, we fit very nicely with the Business Development Board and the Chambers of Commerce. We all pretty much focus on these industries when we try to attract companies, retain them or expand them. And hospitality is one of our largest industries. But these industries, I can tell you finance, we have more companies kicking tires here in Palm Beach County than we've ever seen from the Northeast, from Connecticut, Massachusetts, New Jersey, New York, and even from California now. So things are looking up here in Palm Beach County. Next slide, please. And I, I would be remiss if I didn't talk just a moment about what we do at Forest Board. These are where we assist job seekers and companies that are here or are interested in coming we always provide labor market information so they know the talent pipeline that's available. We love to collaborate with other community partners in the different programs we have. Our career prep tries to get younger people ready for the workforce, youth and young adult, try to get these folks internships. We have a disability and special needs department, a veterans department, and a very strong reentry department that assists those coming out of prison and jail. And we have a lot of grants and scholarships and Barbara can attest to us helping people get into careers at Palm Beach State and other higher education institutions across the county to get them into a career path 
that hopefully they'll stay on for the rest of their life. The next slide, please. And this is as of last month. These are the numbers for the different industry sectors that we have. You can see professional business services is at the top, followed by trade, transportation, utilities, obviously education and health is a, always a robust industry in our community. And leisure and hospitality that was way down is now back up. I can't wait to see that number go over 90,000 again. And then our government organizations. And we last month, leisure and hospitality had the most job gains in the month of March was 1,700. And that's part of the issue right now is we can't find enough people to get into these jobs. And as Kelly said at the beginning, or Sergio, our occupancy at these hotels are 80% in March. Some of them on the weekends are absolutely slammed. You go to the Bend, you go to PGA National, you go down to Boca Hotel and Club. I mean, we have just top tier hotels to accommodate everyone and their, their needs. Next slide, please. And then these are the open jobs I pulled out of Employ Florida in the hospitality industry. And this is where we really wanna get people back in to the hospitality industry. And as Kelly said, Roger at the Singer Island Marriott started as a valet parker. And he worked his way up through a lot of these different departments and now he's the general manager of that property. So there's tons of jobs available. Stephen's gonna talk about some training that South Tech provides and I'm sure Barbara will as well. But these are things that if people say there, there's no jobs available, that's simply not true. We have well over 2,000 jobs available in our system alone. So I think that's it for me. I, I appreciate your time. And it's great that we're doing this. We want to get back in person as soon as we possibly can. But hopefully that was some information that you can share with others in your network. So thanks, Kelly and Kirby. That's perfect, Michael. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, it is important to have accurate information to share with your employees and your contacts and your family and your neighbors. So that's one of the reasons that we so appreciate, Michael, you bringing us such timely information. I know a lot of work goes into um, getting that data for us. So thank you. Kirby, I'm going to ask you to go ahead and launch that poll for us, if you would. And we'll give that just a second to kind of roll while we um, give Barbara a second to kind of gather herself. She's going to be our next speaker. Um, Barbara Cipriano is with Palm Beach State College. And I, I, I as I said, I'm not going to um, read her bio. I'm sure she She's, all the information is available on her. She's an accomplished, talented woman, and we really appreciate you spending your time with us. Um, Kirby, how are we doing with the poll? We are good. We just have a few more coming in. Okay. I love doing polls with you guys. We've gotten so much interesting information. So thank you very much for taking that, that time to do the poll for us. Um, okay. Right. I think I'm going to end it and I will share the results. Okay. So, um, yeah, I, I think it's, uh, it's one of those moments where people are very res uh, resourceful with where they're looking. And I, I'm just always curious, the hospitality and tourism industry is always um, amazed me with their abilities to create something out of nothing. So <laughs> uh, what does the poll say, Kirby? Okay, so internet is definitely the winner of this. It's got 81%. Um, then personal contacts at 69%. Um, so lots of referrals, it sounds like. And then 25% with agencies and headhunters. And then 19% uh, with other. And it looks like um, somebody put trade organizations, um, museum specific um, in the chat. And then social media has really helped find employees as well. Um, so I know I've seen on Facebook and everything, people are LinkedIn. always advertising, LinkedIn especially. Yeah. So, Yeah, that's great. Um, so it'll just give you guys some, maybe some other avenues to consider as well. And if you think of things, you know, throughout the conversation this morning, places that you'd like to try or that you have tried, just drop them in the chat box for us. That'd be great. Okay. Um, so let's move on to Barbara. Barbara, we had so much fun in the dress rehearsal yesterday hearing about what you're doing. So I can't wait for you to tell everybody here. Go ahead, take it away. What's going on? Well, good morning. Uh, good morning. Uh, I'm just a bit new to the group. Uh, I'm the interim dean. 
for workforce programs and uh, continuing education. So um, I just wanna share some highlights of things that uh, you may not uh, be aware of at this time. We are working really diligently with the school district. Stephen, uh, Stephen and I are part of a working group uh, that is working to align the curriculum and create those pathways. So our, our kids, when they start school, they have a way, a pathway, they can see what the future can hold for them. Um, so that's one area that we're uh, working with right now to, to better align pathways. And the other area is that we are obviously the post-secondary education provider in our, in our county, the largest one. So we run um, a hospitality tourism degree, an AS degree that has uh, two separate uh, certificates in there. And those certificates um, allow an individual to um, elevate their skills if they're in the industry already. Uh, it provides them either front of the house or culinary skills uh, within a six month time frame, two semesters, very timely, uh, bang, 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 they can get in and out of the certificate. And those are the, the, the individuals that are looking for promotion to run your hotels, to run your spas, to run your restaurants. That's the audience that um, will take those certificates. And then we help to work with career source and uh, finding our business partners uh, to get jobs. We're always about those connections. We wanna close that loop at all times, ensure that what they're learning is relevant. And at the end, there is a job. And uh, I just wanna note that uh, Ms. Jenny Posadas is on this call. I think probably most of you are familiar with Jenny. Uh, Jenny was now promoted to the Director of Corporate and Continuing Education. So she, is, she will continue to stay involved within this arena. But I wanna share with you also the fact that uh, we're doing a number of things. One of the things that I, I'm not sure most of you are familiar with, but we offer some programs uh, such as cosmetology and massage. So now when you think about those two, what do you think of? Possibly resorts? possibly cruise lines. So when you start thinking about a completer in a massage program or a completer in cosmetology, tie them in with maybe one of those uh, elevated credit courses in business or front end hospitality, you now have an entrepreneur that is work ready with those skills to come and service our community. So those are the ties that we're working on a little more intentionally uh, because entrepreneurism is, is key here. We're looking for people that are agile, they can think clearly, and they can move and really elevate, continue to elevate our community. The other, um, there's two more things I wanna share with you. We are working with our correctional facilities. We are providing programs for reentry, uh, reentry citizens. So to discuss that pipeline, Michael was referring to, you know, where are we going to find people, workers? Uh, we are looking at that as a pipeline to reentry because those reentering citizens need good jobs. And we're not talking a uh, low pay, we're talking about a mid-level, you know, um, high wage type of to, to uh, end that recidivism uh, issue and be productive citizens in, uh, in our community. So the college is very integrated in that, in that process now with just a variety of trades moving forward. The other a part of our work is uh, through continuing corporate and continuing education. We offer for the adult learner entry programs. You can take a six week course in basic food and prep, whether it's for personal reasons or for professional, those that have that passion, you know what? I've got my degree, or maybe I don't have my degree, but you know, I really want, I love to cook. I'm a foodie, I watch food TV, you know, I wanna do this. So we offer those programs for, for our community, our adults in the community. And the other piece of that is that the college has customized training available. So if you're a boutique hotel, a boutique industry, and you say, Barb, I don't see something that I need uh, and say, okay, we can make that happen for you. So we will customize whatever the work is, the, the curriculum that you need, and we will help build that uh, or we will provide support services. I wanna share that we have many agencies, municipalities that use us as 
um, HR uh, mm -hmm. functions within for their programs uh, because we can expedite that process. So we do a lot of that type of customized work and training. So um, that is that enough in a nutshell? How's that? That's perfect, Barbara. Um, sure. I learned something yesterday when you talked and I learned something today. So that's great. And I love the idea of taking different degrees and you know putting them together to create kind of a custom plan for people. That's very creative and, and, and exciting. So congratulations, both of you, Jenny, Barbara, wonderful work that you're doing and thank you for that. Um, you're right, we need everybody working, everybody. <laughs> so wonderful, thank you. Thank okay, you. Um, Peter, Peter Risi. Is it Risi or Richie? I'm sorry, I didn't get a chance to clarify that with you earlier, and I feel terrible when I mispronounce no, someone's name. It's fine, it's Richie. Richie. Peter, thank you so much for joining us. Um, I'm sure you guys, everything looks a little bit the same and a little bit different. Um, so what does it look like from where you're sitting, Peter? Well, it's it's very interesting, similar, and, and um, the, you know, Many of us in the business started as dishwashers, valet, and all. So hospitality just continues to be that type of industry where education is more of a must now if you want to be a senior leader, but it's still not a mandate. And you'll find many CEOs and, and VPs who, you know, have a GED, and that's completely fine. There are more and more people with degrees and more companies requiring management man, for manager and training roles degrees. But right now, um, it's it's a void like I've never seen before. And, you know, like Roger, I started as a dishwasher at 14 years old in my high school in Broward County. They made an announcement on the loudspeaker and that's how I got my first job. And, you know, many of us, um, it's like a, it's a bad pun, but it's like a virus. If hospitality is in your blood, it's not going to go no matter how many times you try to run away. And um, I, my goal was to go to law school. I worked, you know, uh, restaurants all through high school. I worked banquets and catering and airline all through college. I got into law school. I wanted to be a hospitality lawyer. I did a semester and I hated the work. So I immediately jumped out, went back to grad school and then been, went into hotels. And it's been that way ever since. And um, what I'm seeing right now is just completely bizarre. Um, during COVID-19, my, my job for 10 years with Intercontinental Hotels Group was um, firing GMs that were underperforming, taking over hotels or closing hotels for renovation and firing the entire staff for a while until we could hire them back. So I was very familiar with career source and outplacement and having people get help while we were renovating hotels. So what I'm seeing right now um, and what I saw at the beginning of COVID, last January, I started to realize that we were gonna be laying off and furloughing in mass and hospitality workers go from you know, 100 miles an hour to zero and it doesn't sit well in their wheelhouse. So we put together a certificate to keep them occupied during COVID. And uh, we have about 1200 employers that we regularly post jobs for. So I wow. did a, a very quick survey to see if they thought they would utilize the certificate and they said, yes, let's, we'll use it. Well, it went viral and we've now had 84,000 people. Wow. Yeah, so 165 countries and um, the comments from those individual, we have over 12 million comments, turned into what I thought would be really useful for a research project because we started to realize their attitudes toward hospitality were changing. Um, many of them couldn't wait to get back, like all of us, and have the bug. And others were wondering what they could do with their skill sets. And we worked very closely with, um, with Steven's team at Career Source. We had a great speaker in the certificate program who, who works with hospitality. And um, they have found all different ways to um, move along a pathway, like Barbara said, towards many things that require the same skill set. So they're working in veterinary practices as as we, you know, front of the house managers, they're working in hospitals and patient care. 
They're working at Chewy.com and Amazon on call centers. So the skill set is very, very broad and applies to anything really services industry. Um, I, when, I, when I came to FAU about 13 years ago, as, as a labor of love, I post jobs myself and I put in the chat our email address. We have a network now that has 70,000 people on the email list. So every day, every day I get the job postings and I just blast them out myself. Um, I've been averaging 300 emails a day for the past month. And it, the number of people seeking employees is just incredible. And those are just the job emails. And uh, in the short run, until the um, stimulus and unemployment run out, there's that lacking, it's like a chasm of the hourly associates. That's really what we're missing. Because right now it's almost more beneficial for them to not pay gas and tolls and parking and daycare and just wait it out. At the same time, the hotels and restaurants are clamoring for employees because everybody's busy. So it'll, it'll, it'll come back in a big wave in the next 90 days as that money tapers off. Um, but already the hotels are scurrying. I had um, a call this week with a brand new restaurant that opened on Las Olas in Fort Lauderdale. They've been closed Mondays and Tuesdays because they just can't find the staff. And they're closed for the next three weeks on Mondays and Tuesdays, which is not what they want to do. They're a seven day a week operation. So it's like nothing I've ever seen. And um, Somebody said they moved here 41 years ago. I think I think it was uh, uh, Steve. Um, I you know I moved here 43 years ago, and this you know I've been through the gas crisis and the Gulf Persian Gulf War and 9/11. This was different because it was every segment, every part of the world, every oh. level of employee. And one of the things that I've noticed as a takeaway is people have had a lot of time to stop and think. And they're thinking about other careers because they've never really had that time to sever and reflect. And I think that's where uh, Career Source and Palm Beach State really come into to play. We are, we are working um, side by side with Palm Beach State. We're trying to do more articulations together. Um, our Bachelor of Science degree, which we've never really used to a great extent, we're going to move that forward. We have, you know, a Bachelor of Business Administration, but the Bachelor of Science ties together more easily for someone who wants to go from high school to a certificate, maybe to an AS, then to a BS as they move along their pathway. So lots of things going on, but the... Um, the biggest is just the sheer number of job postings. It's been something I've never seen in my entire time in academia. Um, the Palm Beach State has a round table next week that we're all participating in and we've got a lot of webinars going on. And um, I put a link in the, in the chat that is just a graphic that I like everybody to look at later. It shows the number of international arrivals since the 50s when air travel started to boom. And if you look at the graph, it's really comforting because even after 9-11, the downturn is really just a short blip in time. So like Sergio said, when we look back on this, it's gonna be a short blip in a graph because immediately we'll grow, grow, grow again. And you know, I've lived in Florida since I was 12. Agriculture was the only other biggie that I remember in my lifetime um, besides tourism. And you know, it is, it's here to stay. We always say, oh, you know, we wanna diversify and, and Palm Beach County's done a great job diversifying. But tourism is a part of our DNA, and mm -hmm. it always will be. And the service industry in general, uh, the cosmetologists, the front desk agents, the, uh, the, the retail stores, the, you know, the, the tellers at banks, um, the gift shops, all of those skills go together to make one big service industry. So in partnership, 
with the um, other institutions. It's just incredible. And it's so nice to see Stephen on here from South Tech because we dedicate faculty members in each county to go out to high schools that have hospitality and culinary just to talk about what jobs exist in the field. I don't care if they do a PhD or a certificate or no formal ed. I just want them to realize that hospitality made a life for me. I mean, I grew up in a family on welfare, started as a dishwasher, and here I am 55 years old, you know, with a doctoral degree because hospitality was there for me. So, I'm loving the success stories that we're getting just from the people on in the group this morning. This is awesome, Peter. Yeah, my, my parents never finished high school. You know, I never even knew what college was. Mm -hmm. I um, was lucky to get a Pell Grant and I went away to school and hospitality has been able to make me an employee my whole life, you know? Yep. So, I, I, you know, ha, no matter how you slice it, it's, it's, um, it's a great feeling. Listen to Sergio talk about the quietness of the missing mm -hmm. planes. It's just yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you've given us a perfect segue to Stephen. Thank you for setting that up so nicely, yeah. Peter. <laughs> that was absolutely perfect. Yeah. yeah. So Stephen and Peter, thank you so much for joining us. Um, it's so exciting. And, and Peter was among the, the people that really started this whole conversation that created the, the meeting for us today. So I, I appreciate everything that you've done to contribute to this conversation. Um, Stephen, Peter just teed it up for you. Uh, <laughs> that was wonderful. Take it away. Tell us what you're doing. He really did. And, and he brought me back to my childhood. Um, I lied about my age when I was uh, 14, told him I was 16 and I was a porter at Dunkin' Donuts and Hamden, Connecticut. And they liked me so much that they ended up paying me under the table for two years. And, and that was my entry. I came from a family of a father who was not a high school graduate either, but he was a, a restaurant manager. He did Howard Johnson's in Connecticut on the highway. And uh, my whole college career, I worked my way through with hospitality and catering. And, and I'm going to start there because it's a really important place, I feel, to start because I looked at hospitality in the industry as, as just a way to earn some extra money just in order to move on. And as life went on, things kind of changed, especially where I am now at South Tech. Um, you know, South Tech does things a little bit differently for those of you who don't know who we are. And I just wanna put out some numbers for all of you. Um, first of all, South Tech is an institution, as you know, we're probably the only true career and technical education secondary school in Palm Beach County. Uh, we're located in Boynton Beach. Our high school just moved to Woolbright um, in the old Odyssey Middle School. It's an incredible facility, and I invite any of you to call me after this, and I'd love to give you a tour. What we're doing here is absolutely fantastic. We have a 97% graduation rate with a population that's about 93% free and reduced lunch. What that means is that, you know, I, I don't know where some of these kids wake up, and, and I hope some of you don't either, but what I do know is that they're graduating high school and they're doing it through South Tech Academy. But to add on to that, about 93% of those kids are walking across the stage with an industry certification, an actual skill out of high school that they can choose either to go into industry or they can choose to go to post-secondary. And we're incredibly proud of that because we pride ourselves on graduating these students being both college and career ready. Very, very important. So I like to think that we cut the line to college. Um, we had a discussion yesterday and, and it's college is not for everybody. And I think we can all agree to that. And the question becomes is what do we do with our youth who, who are not ready for that? You know, what are we doing with these kids? Are they going home and eating Pringles on their couch watching television? Or are they going out and becoming productive citizens? Um, I want to tell you what I'm going to offer all of you, because my heart is really with the hospitality industry. I want to tell you about our programs. Right now, we have about 13 programs in which we're graduating kids with industry certifications, as I said. Our culinary program, which is very close, to, well, which is the hospitality industry, um, they are graduating, every single one of them, with ProStart and ServeSafe. I mean, they're coming work ready out of high school. So I like to say that we cut the line. Because if these kids don't want to go on to post-secondary, they're ready to work for you. One of our industry partners, and that's my job, by the way, I'm so sorry. Um, I'm Steve Kozak. I am the business uh, development manager here at South Tech. And my job is to go out into industry with people like you and bring you in here to show you what we do. Because we're creating your next generation workforce. That's what we do. And that's what we do well. Teddy Morse, all of you know Ed Morse Automotive. We just partnered with them and I wanna tell you what we're doing with them. 
what we're doing is we're taking the best of the best of our students, which are several of them in, in the program, and we're putting them through internships starting in their junior year. So now these kids are not only going to be swinging wrenches, they're going into industry, they're standing with the service manager, they're going with master techs, they're going on the sales floor, and they're looking at the industry from a 30,000 foot view. Now, why is that important? Well, because these are young adults. They have no idea what they want to do. We get them when they're 14 years old. And at 14 years old, they're choosing a trade to go into for the next four years of their life. And every single day, for the next four years of their life of high school, they will be in a trade class for 90 minutes a day. It's really incredible if you think about it, because we are truly training the next generation workforce. So my offer to all of you, come to South Tech, talk to our kids in our culinary, talk to our kids in the business, uh, in our business academy, come talk to our kids in our graphic arts department, come talk to these kids and show them and tell them how they can be a success in the hospitality industry. I think one of the mistakes that we make as professionals, and I've owned a restaurant here in the county as well, is that we're not searching perhaps in the right places for our workforce. We're not starting to tell these 14-year-old kids or 13 or 12-year-old kids what is special here in Palm Beach County. In South Tech Preparatory, our middle school, grades six through eight, we start there just giving them a whole vision of what's available to them here in the county. But to have one of you to come in, to look at an 11-year-old young woman in the eye and say, hey, I'm, you know, I'm a master chef and this is how I became that. And I used to be you and I used to wake up where you woke up and I make a great living and I'm proud of myself and I am a success. That's what we need to be doing with our youth today. You see, COVID did something very special to, to all of us, um, as, as Peter also said. Um, but one thing it's had us rethink also is secondary and post-secondary education. If you're gonna be an academian and you need skill sets in a, in a post-secondary institution, fantastic, go for it. But if you don't, and you're not an academian and you don't wanna do Algebra II again or Calc, you know, there are other options. And I feel such pride that South Tech Academy offers that opportunity to children. So with Ed Morse, this partnership is gonna be public very soon. You'll all be reading about it. Hopefully there'll be some good PR on that. We've also partnered with a company called Hunter Engineering. And Hunter Engineering is the worldwide leader in manufacturing automotive equipment. So they've provided us with $350,000 worth of automotive equipment that our kids are being trained on every single day. So when they make that transition from that graduation stage into a shop, they're going to know exactly what they're doing with the equipment that they're going to be working on. Um, I, I'm so thankful that um, I was invited and I want to thank Kirby so much for reaching out to me. I want to thank the people at Career Source because y'all are just awesome. I want to thank Barbara. Barbara, we've worked together and what you do at PBSC is incredible. And, and Peter, you and I, I think I've, I've met in passing, but I look forward to getting to know you just a little bit better. Um, and again, please, when you receive my contact information, reach out. Let me show you what we do here at South Tech. Just come in and check it out. Meet our instructors. They're professional. If I throw out the name Walter Tanner to you, I think most of you know him from Lincoln Center. He's one of our top chefs. I mean, he's training these kids, the next generation, to bake and cook and to work in your kitchens. And our business instructor is teaching them to be your front desk receptionist or, or, your, or, or your bell person, for, for God's sake. So we should really be teaching these kids that hospitality is a career. It's not just a stop along the way for an hourly wage like it was for me. Um, but again, thank you so much for having me. And thanks, Kelly. So oh, gosh, our pleasure, Peter. And it's, I'm Stephen, I'm sorry, it's so exciting to hear the work that you're doing. And, um, you know, as, as we said in the rehearsal yesterday, p kids are going to come out of high school, and they're going to work for somebody, they can work for you, or they can work for a drug dealer, <laughs> but they all have to eat, you know, and they're going to work for somebody and we'd like them to be, you know, productive, responsible, happy citizens that will serve all of us. So it is really important that we that we show them paths that they can follow. Um, okay, so um, I, I want to thank our speakers. This has been so inspirational. And I want to remind everybody that we will be sending the contact information of everybody on the call to you, including the contact information of our speakers. Kirby, if you want to go ahead and launch that poll for us, I would like to get a little information from you guys about how we need to meet going forward. Um, I would love to plan a, um, a social event for you guys. And I don't know whether that's something you're interested in. Um, so we're just looking for a little information about what would work well for you and what you'd like to see. Kirby and I have kind of 
let this group um, drive itself. We have purposefully not uh, not focused it in any direction and just let it kind of flow from what you guys needed. So we're just looking for a little feedback there. Kirby, how are we doing? About ready to close that or? Give it a couple of seconds. We are waiting just for a few more. Okay. After we finish the poll, we're going to go ahead and do some self introductions. In the past, I have encouraged you guys to really meet outside of these meetings and see how you can't help one another. Maybe you can form packages between your properties and, and um, you know, share the same clients. And I have had some really wonderful success stories of how you guys have embraced that and done really wonderful things. So I want to encourage you when you get the contact information of the people who were here on this call, you need to reach out to them, find out what's going on and how you can help one another. Kirby, are we ready to close up that poll now? Yes. And okay. Just for you, so y'all know, Kelly's not able to see these answers, so that's why I'm going over them aloud. I know y'all can see them. Um, so it's a little bit of a split right here. So we have 31% that's wanting to do it in person, and then 50% want to do it vi virtually, and then 50% want to do a social event. Luckily, nobody said don't meet too busy, which we would we <laughs> we would understand because that is a good thing if you're too busy to be able to join us. But again, this is one of my favorite meetings to be in. So I was happy to see that nobody wants us to quit this just yet. Um, all right. Thank you. So. And thank you for, for helping us with that, guys. We really are, you know, kind of feeling in the dark to figure out how we can serve you best. Um, but let's go ahead and do some self introductions. Remember, I did ask a question about, you know, if you, what got you involved in hospitality? If there's something in particular you'd like to share with us, that's great. Um, but I do want you guys to have an opportunity to do some self introductions. So, Kirby, I'm going to turn it over for, to you. And you facilitate, I appreciate. All right, I'm going to go with Al. Well, hello, Kirby. Hello, Kelly. Thank you very much. Uh, I never miss one of these meetings. I find them incredibly interesting. So on, I have two comments to make. Number one, my first job in hospitality was dishwasher. And I have uh, since moved into various things. Uh, I've built and owned two restaurants, a ski lodge, a nightclub, a discotheque. So I've been through the gamut. I'm getting to be an old and gray guy uh, uh, hanging around too long, perhaps. But I do want to make a couple of comments about today's um, topics. Uh, it's, it's very encouraging to see our unemployment rate at 4.5%. So uh, Michael Corbett, uh, thank you very much for the job that you do. Um, however, I, I, I have been dealing in the international space for the last uh, 20 years or so. And I have argued and got myself in a lot of trouble for making statements like I'm going to make right now. And that is that Palm Beach County remains very myopic, very internally focused and not internationally focused. Um, I encourage uh, this panel and the topic that we're talking about to begin to look more internationally as the COVID opens up, as people begin to travel, um, as we begin to need to deal in multiple languages, and particularly with regards to the topic of the, of the, of the year so far, and that is immigration, we have all sorts of visa issues that come up, and we have all sorts of hospitality places in, especially the private clubs in Palm Beach County that bring people in on J visas and M visas and, and uh, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Those laws are changing dramatically, and I've made the suggestion in the past, and I'll make it again, that we probably should focus a little bit on that. And uh, uh, I would offer that to you, Kelly. And Yeah, and, and thank you, that. Al. I actually have that. Kirby and I have, you know, kind of short-term things and long-term things, and I have that in my long-term list of things to do. I totally agree with you. Um, so thank you, Al, and thanks for joining us. And I want to thank Peter uh, Ritchie, and I will reach out to him. I think it's incredible what, what you're doing at FAU. Uh, please keep that up. Thank you. Thanks, Al. Uh, Betsy. Let me unmute. Good morning, everybody. I'm Betsy. I'm the Chief Happy Officer at Happy Delicious. <laughs> where we deliver happiness in every bite of our edible cookie dough. And I've been in business since 2015, um, recently, actually this week, formally launching um, Jars of Dough, which is a totally different space for us in terms of labeling opportunities. And in the past, my entire business has really been focused B2B. 
So Whole Foods, Palm Beach County, Milan's Markets, stuff like that. And the shift to B2C has been a pandemic shift as well, um, which brought me to the chamber. Um, I have been involved with ACF and have loved what ACF did during the pandemic um, when I joined the chamber um, and looked at the different committee opportunities. I thought this resonates. It resonates with who I am, what I believe and the importance of hospitality for all of us. So um, I look forward to being part of this and let me know how I can help. Well, thank you. And we are happy to have you join us. Danielle. Hi, everyone. It's great to see you all. Um, so my name is Danielle Spagnolo. I'm the area sales manager for Vista Host Hotels. And I'm also a member of the tourism task force. I'm here every week. I love this meeting. It's probably one of my favorites. It's an awesome, awesome networking event. Um, I've been in touch with Peter Ritchie and as far as because we're also experiencing the staffing struggles that everyone else is. So if you know of anyone, please feel free to send them our way. Um, and Stephen, I'd love to connect with you too, you know, in that regard. So feel free to reach out. All right. Well, thank you so much. Jenny. Hi. Um, excuse me. Good morning. How's everybody doing? Great. Good. It's a, you know, here's the thing what I'm looking at. It's amazing to see uh, communication, uh, collaboration, commitment among key players that we're trying to make our community much better than what it is. So um, I've been working for the college for the past six years. So I have the opportunity to work with uh, Michael Corbett, with Peter Ritchie. It's nice to see you, by the way. So um, I am looking forward to continue working with all of you. Uh, Stephen, I have heard South Tech for the longest time. And believe me, we're not just hospitality. We should get a lot more, more, um, more uh, connected because we have trades classes. I mean, we have all kinds of stuff. So what I'm trying to say is thank you so much for having this communication. And I think that what is important is for us to articulate and to partner our efforts. Because at the end of the day, we are trying to make our community much better, right, than what it is. So with that being said, thank you so much. I did enjoy um, this whole task. I think I like this meeting. Can you sign me up again? I sure can. <laughs> I love it. Thank you. Thank you thank so much you. for having me. Well, we were happy it. to have you. No, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Davis. Appreciate You're that. Well. You're welcome. Lauren. Hi, good morning, everybody. I'm Lauren Perry. I'm the Public Affairs Director at Flagler Museum in uh, Palm Beach. And um, I was happy to join in um, sort of to take notes and relay information back to my teammates. Uh, we do have a number of departments that are hiring um, all very different skill sets from visitor services to maintenance tech, et cetera. So uh, we have a little, we, people wear many hats here. So um, this was a very interesting conversation. I was a little disappointed there weren't more attractions and, and hotels represented here today. Um, I'm kind of surprised because uh, it was really good information, but, um, you know, um, and I just, I want to jump in here for a second, Lauren, Carrie, uh, Kirby and I were talking about this a little bit earlier, and I've noticed a bit of a trend in that people are accessing the recordings after the meetings. So I think some of the people who aren't actually able to join us for the meeting, they'll watch it later. So I'm hoping that that, that will happen because you're right, this, this meeting in particular did have an awful lot of great information. So thank you for, for always being here. It's great to see you. Yeah, thank you so much. And that's fantastic to hear. I was, I was hoping, I guess, from my perspective to get to talk to other organizations like ours, um, but I did learn a lot and thank you so much to all the presenters. I'm gonna be checking out everyone's websites and forwarding to my teammates. So thank you so much. Thank you. And Lauren, I do know that the Flagler is having an event coming up. Do you wanna say a little bit about that? Um, we actually just launched a new food concept called Picnic by the Cafe des Beaux-Arts. It's essentially a food counter um, that's currently um, open within our museum store space. And we're offering people the opportunity to come and have a little picnic lunch in our coconut grove. So that's something we hope to continue through the spring and summer months, just to activate our outdoor spaces and offer refreshments. Um, I so like it. 
grab and go. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. I'll be there. Thanks, <laughs> awesome. Um, Peter Pignataro. Sorry. And I, I'm sorry if I said that wrong. No, that's quite all right. <laughs> thank you, Kirby. Uh, nice to see you again. And good to see you, Kelly. And thank you so much for putting this together. It's always a really beneficial event. Uh, first and foremost, I'd like to say to Lauren, uh, can't wait until the holidays come to visit the Flagler at night. Um, one of my favorite things to do. <clears throat> so I've got this long list. So I need to get to the bin. I need to get to all these other <laughs> hospitality events in our community. <clears throat> and for Peter, uh, Richie, and Al, uh, yes, I also started as a dishwasher uh, many years ago. Uh, tried short order cook only because they needed someone. Uh, but uh, being a 24-hour restaurant and trying to do spaghetti and breakfast at the same time, eh, it wasn't working out. But I've learned a lot from this group. Uh, I provide information. Uh, I'm a, uh, an analyst for CareerSource doing, uh, uh, well, basically performance here, but also labor market information and economic information in the county. Please reach out to Michael Corbett or myself and we can help you. Uh, there's never a charge for my services. So what we can do, we'll provide. Um, there is some interesting information coming. New press release this Friday with our latest numbers. And please don't focus on the unemployment number. Please look at the employment number. The employment numbers, which are driven by taxes, much more accurate, and it's by industry. So when you're comparing year over, you're going to start to see that trend that we are catching up a little bit. We're not there yet, but we are catching up. The one thing I do want to leave on the table is we all are talking a lot about um, the, un unfortunately, the extension now of the unemployment benefits. Uh, and maybe when it runs out, we'll be able to support hospitality better. However, I've been waiting for those in my age group, the boomer cliff to hit and large retirements to start. And it just happened in 2020. Mm -hmm. So please don't be surprised if those employment numbers are going to be lower and we're going to be struggling for a while. So we need to do really what, uh, again, Stephen is doing. Uh, down at South Tech, we need to support what Peter's doing and everyone at the educational level, uh, especially at the uh, uh, Palm Beach State College. We need to get young people energized. And, and again, those success stories in front of young people will yes. really move them, move the needle. It did for me in high school. Yes. So thank you so very much for the time. And thank you for this great meeting. Thanks, Peter. Rick. Hi, Rick. Yeah, we can't hear you. Unmute yourself. There Can you go. Can you hear me now? <laughs> Absolutely. First of all, thank you so much for the invitation to this meeting. Uh, very, very uh, informative and a lot of great personnel. Um, on, the, on to that comment. Well, first of all, uh, I was a busboy at 15 and I spent 20 years in restaurants and 27 in hotels. Um, it's the people that make up the hospitality industry, and that's why I love it. And hopefully we're going to rectify the hotels and attractions because Kelly uh, has agreed to be our guest speaker at the Palm Beach <laughs> County Attraction Association luncheon in May. I sit on the board, I'm actually the vice president. So uh, this is a, a wonderful thing that you put together. Uh, thank you so much for the invitation, and uh, that's it. Thank you. Thank I'll tell you. them what property you're with, Rick. You didn't mention oh, your I'm property. Sorry. I'm, the direct, I'm the director of sales and marketing for the Best Western here in West Palm Beach. Also, uh, my wife and I will be back on air with our uh, radio show, Life in the Palm Beaches and the Treasure Coast with Rick and Christy. Uh, my wife obviously does the same thing that I do. She's the director of sales of the brand new residence in, in Palm Beach Gardens. So Hospitality is a way of life. And yeah, I did try to get out. Uh, I have a CDL, I can drive truck. I'm actually a licensed carpenter and a certified sheet metal worker. Uh, but you know what? Uh, nothing better than the hospitality business. And this property, the Best Western, it, everyone knows it's been around for a long time, 52 years. I've been here nine years. This is my ninth year. And I tell you what, I've never worked at a hotel that the staff is more like 
a second family, then it is just that we are family. Uh, there's people that have been here 20, 25 years. I'm one of the newbies at nine <laughs> years at this property, which is kind of strange, but yeah. um, my assistant's been here 17 years. Uh, we have wow. someone at the front desk, 25 years. I, it's just- They're all success stories. It's fabulous. Yeah, yeah. It, it really is. So from age 15 busboy, uh, worked my way up uh, to general manager of a fine dining restaurant. And of course, the hotel pulled me from that restaurant uh, into the hotel, and I haven't looked back. So thank you so much. And Kelly, I am so looking forward to you being our guest speaker at the Attraction Association in May. Well, thank you for inviting me. I'm looking forward to it as well. <laughs> and I see a lot of candidates in, in this group that can be not only guest speakers, but also on the radio show. So thank you so much. Thank you. We're happy to have you. And Shireen. Hey guys. Hi everyone. Great to see a lot of familiar faces and really great to hear about all the um, employment information. When we're talking about meetings, we're also one of those ones. Um, we've been around for 25 years doing all the fun activities in Palm Beach County, including on our 50 foot catamaran here. We just opened a visitor information center in the heart of downtown West Palm Beach. So if you haven't been in um, and are looking for employees in our new retail side of our business. So this was a timely meeting. We're on the hunt for employees and, and it's all hands on deck right now. We're all in there. So um, it's it's been great meeting today. Very timely for us as we're searching for people in the middle of looking for new people and I'm excited about things to come. So. We hope we'll see you all out for some fun soon. Well, thank you. Thank you for joining. And I believe that's everybody. I did notice some people had to jump off the call, um, but I think today was a successful day. So Kelly, I will hand it back to you. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, so first of all, I want to thank our speakers, of course. Uh, great information. Kirby, thank you for doing all the work that you do and running everything. Otherwise, nothing would ever happen. Um, please mark your calendar for May 12th. That will be our next meeting, and we'll send you some information on that. And of course, we'll send you the contact information of everybody who was here. For those of you guys who are members, please remember there is a job board on the Chamber website. Um, many of our members do real well there, so you can go right in with your username and password and post an item there. Um, also, it's, a, it's available to you for your events. So Lauren, for example, your events and things like that. If you're a member, you need to be putting your events on the community calendar. It is the most frequently visited spot on the whole calendar. So please make sure you take advantage of that. Um, thank you. Gosh, thank you everybody for coming. It's um, it's so exciting to have these meetings now. We were talking earlier, the first couple ones were rough. Everybody was so sad. And now it's like, we're all so happy. So thank you for all the work that you do, all of you. And we will see you at the next meeting. Have a fantastic day. Bye, Bye. everybody. Thanks so much for coming. Bye. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. <laughs>